Hi everyone, Andy Trice here, and I'm back with part three of my series for developing a mobile application powered by IBM Bluemix Mobile Services. In this video, we're gonna take a look at the Cloud and NoSQL database that is offered as part of the IBM Bluemix Mobile Services. First, let's take a look at the app. This version of the app, I'll go ahead and sign in here. This version of the app is using all hard-coded data. You can see, in particular, I've got this list of claims. I'll go ahead and select on any one of those and it goes into another view. We can go back and forth and, and we just have a list of information. Now let me jump over to Xcode and we can take a look at the code that's running here. The data that's being displayed comes from my sample data class right now. And what I'm going to do is replace this with data from a cloud and database. So let me just go in and show you. You can see right now, these are just NS Dictionary objects, hard-coded data. Let me switch over to my Bluemix dashboard and we're gonna go ahead into the app that I'm working with right now, which is called My Dashboard Test. Inside here, we can see all the services that are being used by my app. In particular, in this case, I wanna look at the Cloud and NoSQL database. When you first come in, you'll see the configuration screen. I've already installed the SDK as part of the initial build process uh, covered in video one. But if you were just adding the Cloud and SDK to a project that didn't already have it, you could use CocoaPods and install the toolkit right here. And you have to initial, initialize the app, create an instance of the IMF data manager, and that basically sets up the data manager for accessing data through the cloud and database. Now I wanna go ahead and create a database for my app to use. So I'm gonna click on the cloud and NoSQL database, cloud and dashboard option, and I wanna launch the cloud and dashboard. Once we're in the cloud and dashboard, you can monitor all the databases that you have. Um, again, these are highly performant NoSQL databases. Essentially, all of your data is saved in a NoSQL database as more or less a JSON object. You can have revisions of the object. From the API, you can do full CRUD operations. You can create search indexes and it will be able to scale and it will be able to handle the needs of your application. The first thing that we need to do is create a new database for our app to use. So I'm gonna select add new database and we'll give it the name insurance DB and we'll create this database. Now our database has been created. At this point, we can start building our application and you know, if we wanna put data in here and start querying the information from our app, we can do that. If we want to start inserting data from the app, we'll, we'll have that ability also. Just for quickly setting this up, cause I'm gonna dump some data into this database, I'm gonna to go to my permissions and I wanna grant everyone um, read write access just so I can put data in here very easily. You can configure programmatic access using API keys, or you can share the database, have different users have access to this database. For the time being, I have it wide open so I can just get data in and out very quickly. Next, I wanna jump back over to Xcode. So we'll jump back over to the app delegate class. And right here, let me just uncomment where I've already set up the IMF data manager. And of course, let me import the cloud and toolkit and we've now initialized the data manager, which is the central point of communicating with the cloud and database. Now let me jump back over to my table where we have right here where I was grabbing my sample data and I wanna comment out where I am grabbing the sample data and let me expand some code that I've already written here. In this code, I'm again accessing the IMF data manager shared instance and accessing the remote store insurance DB. With the cloud and API, I can create a local store that gets synced with a remote store, or I can just use the remote store directly. I can create objects, I can update objects, I can delete objects. What I wanna show you right now is simply how to query objects and get them from the back end. When you query objects, you can leave them as generic objects, which are essentially like a key value store, or you can serialize these objects to specific strongly typed class instances. For now, I'm just gonna leave them as NS Dictionary objects uh, just to keep things simple and it works with the hard-coded data that I already have in place. Once the connection to the database is established, the completion handler code block gets invoked and in here, we're gonna do a couple things. The first thing I'm gonna do is create an index in the database. When I put data in here, I want an index created on the customer attribute. If we jump back to my sample data, which is really what this is gonna look like, if you see, we have a customer, it's just a text string, it's a name, it's the name of the customer. In the database, I want an index created on this so that we can quickly search based upon the customer name if we choose to. After we've created the index, I wanna go ahead and create a search query. 
To create a search query, the first thing you need to do is create the predicate. The query predicate makes up the conditions that are used in the search, where you can specify a particular value, like I could say, give me the customer named Indiana Jones. In this case, I'm just choosing any cu customer which is greater than an empty string, which means it's just gonna give me all the data that I dump in there, and I'm gonna display it within the app. Once you've created the, the predicate, you create a Cloud Query instance, and you can initialize with a particular data type and the query predicate, or just a query predicate by itself. In this case, the data that I'm gonna be injecting will have some metadata attached to it saying it's a claim. But if I just left that out and I used the query predicate by itself, it would still function the same way. It just wouldn't be filtering based upon the claim metadata. Once you've created the query, you'll access the data store. And we can see right here, once we connect to the remote store, we're going to get an instance variable of store, which references the, the data store. And we're gonna run the perform query function, and we're gonna pass in the query that we just created, which is right here. Once that's complete, we'll receive an array of result objects, if there is one, and an error condition. If there's no error, this will be nil. Right now, I'm not checking for the error condition, I'm just acting upon the results that might be returned. Since I haven't configured this code to be serialized to strongly type objects, the results array is going to contain a collection of CDT mutable document revision objects. These represent a revision of the data that's stored in the Cloudant database. In order to access the data from that revision, we'll access the revision body. This is gonna be an NS object, and what I'm doing right now is I'm just pushing all those generic NS object instances into an array, and then I'm going to set the data for my table that I'm currently viewing, and you can see up here we're in the claims table view. And this data is going to be used when I reload the data for this table, and it'll be displayed within the app. Now let me stop the app that I already had running, and I'll go ahead and launch this again. And we can see that when I log in, we've got our table, but there's no data in here yet. That's because we haven't put any data into the database. I could collect data inside of my app, use either a local or remote data store, and then push that up to the Cloud database and have all the functionality contained within the app. Right now, since I'm only doing a query, so I'm pulling data, I need to put data into that database. So let me jump over into another window where I've already got a script. I'll go ahead and copy this. What this is gonna be used for is a command line function that's going to use the curl program to push this big JSON data array into my database that's available at this URL. So I'm just gonna copy. We're gonna jump over to a terminal and we'll paste it. And now that data has been pushed into the database. Let me jump back over to my Cloudant database and we'll look at all documents and you'll be able to see the data now exists. So this is data that I just inserted from that script on the command line. And we'll look at a couple ones. That one was Indiana Jones. This one is Anna of Arendelle. You can see I got the names from movies. Now let's jump back over to Xcode and we'll launch the app again and we'll be able to see data being loaded from the cloud and database. You can see here now we've got our data loaded and if you reverse back in this video, you'll notice that the data is actually in a different order. This time it's being sorted based upon the customer name. So it's on that customer field, which we created the search index. And just to prove to you that it's dynamic, let me go ahead back over to our command line and we'll run this script a couple more times. Now, um, just by running that script a couple more times, we put more data into the database. I'll rerun it, and you'll see multiple copies of each data point because I've inserted them multiple times. Just to prove you, it, yes, it is dynamic. You can see we've now got three entries for each data point. There you have it. We are now consuming data from the Cloud and NoSQL database, which is part of the IBM Bluemix mobile services offering. Stay tuned for the next video where I'll cover push notifications from Bluemix mobile applications.